When we think about redox and transferring electrons from one material to another, we can envision that happening with redox valence diagrams. We know that electrons like to get as close to the nucleus as possible, so electrons will fall downward in spontaneous redox reactions. This is kind of like atomic emission, where an electron falls closer to the nucleus in the Bohr model of the atom, but this time it's occurring between two different atoms. Here's an example spontaneous redox reaction. We have magnesium solid and lead 2 plus ion reacting to make magnesium 2 plus ion and solid lead. If we think about the electrons before the reaction happens, they belong to magnesium and are far away from the nucleus. However, lead 2 plus has vacancies that can hold electrons that are close to the nucleus. So naturally, magnesium's electrons would like to get closer to any nucleus, and the vacancy belonging to lead 2 plus allows them to get closer. So before the reaction begins, the electrons are far from the nucleus. After the reaction is finished, the electrons have become closer to the nucleus and now belong to lead. This gives magnesium 2 plus a positive charge because two electrons have been lost. On the other hand, lead 2 plus has gone to lead 0 because two electrons have been gained. So let's go back to our initial introductory reaction where we had iron in copper 2 sulfate. Why are electrons spontaneously transferred from iron to copper 2 plus? Well, iron has high energy electrons, making it a good reducing agent. Reducing agents give their electrons to another species. On the other hand, copper 2 plus has low energy empty orbitals, making it a good oxidizing agent. Remember that oxidizing agents oxidize something else by taking their electrons. So iron's two electrons are going to spontaneously fall downhill and get closer to the nucleus by belonging to copper 2 plus. I have what I hope is a helpful mnemonic to help you remember good reducing agents and good oxidizing agents. I have a picture of a bird or a raptor. A raptor is a great reducing agent with its two talons as electrons. I had to think of something that began with the letter O, so I chose the poor lowly opossum. Now, we've had possums in the garage before, and they're not exactly gentle creatures. They can be quite fierce. But their back is not very fierce, which is the part that the raptor would be able to see. So you can see that good reducing agents are raptors high in the sky with their talons, and good oxidizing agents are opossums low on the ground with their unprotected backs. You may wonder, can the reaction go the opposite direction? Could we take copper's electrons and add them to iron 2 plus? Well, iron 2 plus is a poor oxidizing agent. Its empty orbital is high in energy, whereas copper is a very poor reducing agent. It has very low energy electrons. So just like the raptor might find it hard to fly up to the tree and attack the opossum from below, it is non-spontaneous to jump electrons further away from the nucleus. So good reducing agents have high energy electrons and good oxidizing agents have low energy empty orbitals. Now let's try to solve a problem looking at some valence orbitals. The idea here is that the nucleus is down below, and there might be some other full orbitals with electrons in them, but they're not the ones we're interested in. We're interested in the outermost electrons and the next closest empty orbitals, although there may be other empty orbitals above where we're looking. We're just looking at the valence band. So given mystery elements V and W, 
We want to know which one is the best oxidizing agent and which one is the best reducing agent. But you notice that our choices are not just V and W. We also have some V2 minus and W2 minus and V2 plus and W2 plus. So let's draw those. V2 minus and W2 minus have gained two electrons each. So I'm going to draw the same diagram, but this time, instead of two electrons, I will have four electrons to make V2 minus, and the same with W2 minus. For V2 plus and W2 plus, I am going to have the same levels for the valence electrons, but you notice that I have removed two electrons from V to make V2 plus, and from W to make W2 plus. So the energy levels are the same, we've just added or removed electrons. What do you want for the best oxidizing agent? I hope you think, well, I would like the lowest energy empty orbital. So looking through my choices here, hmm, the lowest energy empty orbital seems to belong to W2 plus. So that is my answer. W2 plus is the best oxidizing agent. What about the best reducing agent? This time I want the highest energy electrons. So looking through my choices, I think this pair of electrons is the highest energy that I am offered, and those belong to W2 minus. W2 minus is my best reducing agent. Now here is a bit more complex question. We want to look at the equation below and indicate the reducing agent, the oxidizing agent, and tell if it is a spontaneous electron transfer. So I have V2 plus plus W2 minus going to V and W. My first step to answer this question is to draw the actual reactants. I have V and W here, but what I want to react is V2 plus and W2 minus. So for V2 plus, I will take away two electrons. And for W2 minus, I will add two electrons, which I must add to this orbital. So now I have what is actually reacting. My next step is to find the reducing agent in this reaction. The reducing agent is the one that is oxidized. We need to find where oxidation happens. Oxidation is losing electrons, and oxidation is getting more positive. Now, the oxidation states of these materials are very easy to determine. For the V2+, plus, it's just plus 2. For the W2-, minus, it's minus 2. For neutral V and W, the oxidation state is zero. So which one is being oxidized? Well, I hope you think that it's the W2 minus going to W0. This is going up in oxidation state. So this is my reducing agent. So I want to circle the highest energy electrons on my reducing agent. My next job is to find the oxidizing agent. Remember that the oxidizing agent is reduced. So certainly V, which goes from plus two to zero, is going down in oxidation state. So on my oxidizing agent, I'm going to circle the lowest energy orbitals. So that means the lower ones on V2 plus. Basically, if it's not the reducing agent, it is the oxidizing agent. Both of these exist on the reactant side. Now I just have to think about electrons moving. When the electrons move from W2- to V2+, do they fall downward or go upward? Well, I hope you feel like they fall downward, which makes this a spontaneous reaction. Let's try another example. Same idea, we're going to find the reducing agent, the oxidizing agent, and tell if it is a spontaneous electron transfer. 
I already have W drawn, but I need to draw V2 minus. So I will add two electrons to V, and now I have V2 minus. My next step is to find the reducing agent. Once again, V2 minus has a minus two oxidation state. W is zero, V is zero, and W2 minus is minus two. So the reducing agent is oxidized. So I'm either going from minus two to zero or zero to minus two. Well, I would have to say that the reducing agent is the V2 minus. It's going upward in oxidation state. So I am going to circle the highest energy electrons that belong to V2 minus. So those would be the outermost ones. Now I need to find the oxidizing agent. Obviously, if it's not the reducing agent, it's the oxidizing agent. But just to provide some detail, W is going from zero to two minus. That is a reduction or gaining electrons. And remember that the oxidizing agent is reduced. Now, if I think about the electrons being added to W, they can't go here. It's already full of electrons. I have to circle the lowest energy empty orbital. So that is the one that is higher up. Now I need to think about V2 minus's electrons going to the empty slot in W. And I trust you can see that is uphill and therefore non-spontaneous. So here are your student questions. I simply want to know spontaneous or non-spontaneous, but to get there, you're going to have to identify the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent. I'm going to help you by making this R2 minus, and I have now drawn for you S2 plus. Remember that the reducing agent gets oxidized. That is why I think R2 minus is the reducing agent, because it is going from minus two to zero, so it is going up in oxidation state. I'll let you finish the rest of this and make your choice. Here is another one for you to think about. I'm going to draw S4 plus for you. Once again, remember the reducing agent gets oxidized. So once again, I think the R thesis is the reducing agent because it goes from zero to plus two. I'll let you finish this. Our last one involves R2 plus, so I've drawn that for you. Once again, the reducing agent gets oxidized. So this time, I believe our S species, which goes from zero to plus two, is our reducing agent. Our last question wants us to choose the best oxidizing agent. Let me draw in some of our choices. Here are our oxidizing agents. And don't forget, we want our opossum creeping on the ground. Next, let's choose the best reducing agent. And of course, we want our raptor with the talons flying high in the sky.